Hi, and welcome to the talk. Today, Sophie and I are gonna talk about Vagrant plugins and how they work in the new Vagrant Go implementation. To get things started, here's Sophia. Recently, we've announced uh, that Vagrant is shifting over to using Go uh, from Ruby. Um, if you're interested, uh, we have a blog post up about it that was published to the HashCorp blog titled Towards Vagrant 3.0. Um, Basically, the cliff notes of that is uh, we think that this is the best way to serve the community going forward um, as like the way that people use virtual machines as like dev environments changes um, in the past uh, couple of years and, and going into the future. Next slide. So um, obviously this is a really big undertaking and we have quite a few challenges to face. Um, a lot of them revolve around Ruby. So we have this really big application. It's got a, a lot of Ruby code in it. Um, and we don't want to throw that all away. Um, we have this huge community that has a bunch of plugins and they're all written in Ruby. Um, Vagrant is a plugin based application. Um, and that's part of the reason why uh, it was able to grow so much. Um, so we don't, we don't want to throw away uh, those plugins or, or ostracize our community like that. And then we also have Vagrant files, which are really just Ruby files. So we want to be able to keep that too. Uh, so one of the major sticking points uh, in this project as, as we go forward with it um, is making sure that we have backwards compatibility um, and we continue to support Ruby. All right, so how are we going to do that? Um, so let's step through this a little bit. So we have this new Vagrant Go implementation. Um, and we have this Ruby imp implementation um, and we need to make them interact somehow. So um, we can use something like gRPC. Uh, it's like a language agnostic um, framework. Uh, we can have like an interface defined on the Go side uh, and then we can have um, something on the Ruby side that's able to talk to it. So that, that's pretty good. Um, Going a little bit deeper into this, what we actually need here then is um, our, our interface defined in Vagrant Go, which uses RPC. And then we have our legacy um, Vagrant API uh, in our like Ruby implementation. And then we need a little shim uh, in between that we can use to translate between uh, the, like the Go RPC implementation and, and the Ruby implementation. And then we can use Go plugin to make managing this a little bit easier. So Go plugin is a tool developed here at HashiCorp. Um, a bunch of our tools uh, already use it, but basically it's um, a plugin system that's implemented over RPC. So it's language agnostic um, and it allows for bidirectional communication. So then what is a Vagrant plugin? So in order to be a Vagrant plugin um, now in this new Go world, you need to have uh, something that can communicate over gRPC um, that implements the plugin interface um, and you need to have be an executable. So you can have any kind of Go binary um, as long as it can talk to Go plugin uh, and talk to, to Vagrant. So using that, that RPC interface or similarly, you can have um, like Ruby work with it. So we can have this Ruby, uh, Ruby Vagrant shim um, run as like a server, so it's executable, uh, and then be able to, to talk to this newly defined interface uh, and be able to translate between that and the old uh, Ruby API. So let's take a little bit of a look at what this RPC-based API uh, looks like. So there's a couple components um, basically, we have these like RPC service definitions for each component where a component is like a piece of a plugin that you would implement. So like a host or a provider or um, a guest or a provisioner. Um, and then we have like for writing Go plugins in particular, like a Go component interface. Um, and then we wrap all this up into a Vagrant plugin SDK. Uh, and that kind of like provides the glue between these two parts. So let's take a look at one of our component interfaces. So 
This is the host um, interface. So what does it mean to be a host um, in Vagrant? Well, it means that uh, you need to be able to detect, um, which is like detect if you're the operating system that the plugin expects. Um, and then we have this notion of capability. So regardless of the language that a host is implemented in, it needs to have like this set of functionality. So the form that these RPC interfaces take is like the function uh, and then the function spec. Um, so for example, detect and the detect spec. And this separation allows plugin authors to do stuff like define what their detect function um, actually needs as inputs. Um, so then we can do stuff like use uh, dependency injection with tools like, like argmapper um, in order to like get all of that information into those functions. So um, this setup becomes a lot more flexible for uh, plugin developers. So moving on to the component interface on the Go side, um, the host interface looks uh, pretty similar to the RPC definition. So it has this detect uh, functionality and then these like capability bits. And the form of these is like the function func. And so what, what this is meant to do is uh, as a plugin developer, you define what your like detect func uh, looks like, and then you just pass back that function. And then the plugin SDK will go ahead and do the work of defining like the, the spec uh, and the actual function for you. Um, so it should be uh, pretty uh, low maintenance to, uh, to get started writing Go plugins. Okay, so let's compare this to what the Ruby side looks like. Um, so this is what a host looks like in the Ruby implementation. It still has like this detect. Um, and then as an implementation detail, uh, it does in fact have these capability uh, ideas. So in addition to those plugin components, which all follow the same structure, uh, we also have core components. So stuff like the machine and the environment and the box. And similar to those component APIs, um, this RPC implementation for these core components is the, follows a similar form. So we still have like the functionality and then the functionality spec um, for like the RPC definition. And what this allows us to do, matching those up with the uh, like Ruby API that currently exists, we can have stuff like our Vagrant Shim translate between these two versions uh, of the API. So when you have like a machine in like your Vagrant Ruby, it's just the same as a machine in your, your Go Vagrant or Vagrant Go. So um, how do we make these work really um, handing it off to Chris? Thanks, Sophia. So let's take a closer look at this new plugin implementation. Go plugins can easily be built using the SDK. However, making existing Ruby plugins work becomes a bit more of a challenge. So let's focus on the built-in plugins within Vagrant. Now, the Go plugin library works by launching a plugin as a separate process. And within Vagrant, we have over 50 different plugins available. Now, Starting a process for each of those plugins would be too heavy. So instead, what we do is we customize our integration with the Go plugin library. So instead of a process being launched for every single plugin, what we do is we launch a single process to run the Vagrant Ruby implementation as a server process. And then we access all of the built-in plugins through that single process. Now, a Go plugin-based plugin can implement multiple components, but it cannot provide multiple implementations of the same component. And so this is where we provide, a, or this is where we integrate a little bit different with the Go plugin library. And what we do is we modify the request metadata to the Vagrant server process, and we include the plugin name that we're looking for for a specific type. And this allows us to access all the different plugins 
of multiple types uh, through just a single process. So we also need to add in uh, an extra service to the Vagrant Ruby implementation so that we can extract information out on the Vagrant Go implementation side. So we add a small service in to uh, the Vagrant Ruby implementation. And what this allows is the Vagrant Go implementation can query all of the available plugins that are currently loaded in the Ruby implementation. And then with this list, the Vagrant Go implementation can register all of those plugins as regular plugins within the process. So finally, we need a Ruby-based component SDK implementation. And so we need this for every single type of plugin that Vagrant supports. So the component SDK implementations provide the required gRPC services for the Vagrant Go implementation to talk to and utilize the Vagrant Ruby implementation. And so what this does is it provides the bridge from Go to Ruby to make the existing plugins usable. So with the new component SDK implementations, we need to be able to run them. And so we do this by adding a new command to the Vagrant Ruby implementation. The Vagrant serve command sets up Vagrant in a special server mode. And so what this does is, is it sets up a gRPC server, which handles all the known plugin types. And once that server is running, it outputs the Go plugin specified connection information. Now, the Vagrant Go implementation uses this to create a single process for the plugins. And then our modified Go plugin integration is used to be able to access all the different plugins through that single process. Now, when Vagrant Go runs, plugins are interacted with as gRPC clients. If a plugin needs to use another plugin, it needs to be provided connection information for that client. So internally within Vagrant Go, we do this using a broker to aid in passing these clients back and forth. When a client is sent to a plugin, the sender wraps it in a new gRPC service and sends the connection info to the plugin. And with that, the plugin can connect to the client and utilize the requested plugin. So what exactly is this broker? Well, the Go plugin library provides a broker implementation, which makes it very, very easy to start new gRPC servers. And in turn, this makes it very easy to pass clients through to other clients without knowing any actual connection details. So for a simple example, we can imagine that we have a vagrant process and that it has a single host plugin. So the vagrant process has a client connection to the plugin, but it also has a broker connection. Now, if we expand this a little bit and imagine that the vagrant process also has this UI implementation. Now, the vagrant process knows the UI interface, but that interface may or may not be a client. The vagrant process just knows the implementation. So if the host plugin wants to use the UI, the vagrant process needs to be able to know how to provide that to it. So what happens is the vagrant process asks the broker to spin up a new gRPC server. And then it provides the UI as a service implementation for that new gRPC server. So once a gRPC server has been set up, it returns back an identifier to the vagrant process. But the broker also sends the identifier and the connection information tied to that identifier onto the plugin. So now the vagrant process can instruct the host to connect to the specific identifier. And the, identi uh, the host plugin has the identifier information tied to the connection info and can create a new UI client and utilize that plugin. So the broker usage is utilized within Vagrant Go for easily passing around plugins. And because of this, a broker is required. Without a broker, plugins could not properly receive requested arguments. And so because of this, the new Ruby Vagrant uh, serve command includes a broker implementation along with all of the uh, component SDK implementations. So 
Let's now have a look at how all this stuff is currently working within the Vagrant Go implementation. So we'll get started by just starting up Vagrant and letting it load up and see that we're actually using this new version of Vagrant. And so all these commands are commands coming in from the Ruby implementation. Now we can see this by running in debug mode. Uh, if we look at the logs that we have, so we can see that the uh, Ruby implementation is actually getting spun up. And then after it's spun up, we start loading in all the different plugins that we know about from the Ruby implementation. And then those plugins, in turn, get registered into Vagrant itself, which we can see here. So now let's take a look at how we actually can utilize uh, Go plugins. So here we have a host plugin uh, that's utilizing the new component SDK. And so it has a single capability. And so uh, the, ca the capability just writes some output to the, the console. So when we run this, we can see uh, the command plugin come up, request the host, and then it uh, checks for the capability and calls the capability on. So now we can turn this off and we can recompile Vagrant. And so when we run this command again, we won't get this um, uh, stubbed in host. Uh, it will actually match our platform and we'll get the expected host that we, we want for this platform. And so this new write host capability doesn't exist. And so it comes up as not found. And so we can actually look to see who, what host uh, was actually matched and is being used here. And so we can look in our, our logs coming out and take a look and see what host was actually detected. And so here we can see that the void uh, host is what's, what was detected and is missing that right hello capability. So what we can do is we can go to that plugin and we can add that capability in. And if we look at that capability, we can see that it's just printing some stuff back out to the console. And so now we can go back and we can rerun the command. And this time when it runs, it'll find the capability and then it'll actually execute it and we'll see the output of the screen. So now we can take a look at a uh, Go plugin uh, based command that's written in uh, Ruby instead of in Golang. And so this utilizes a, a handful of things that are currently within the Vagrant Ruby implementation uh, that are going to be exported out into uh, the Ruby SDK for building Go plugins. And so we can move this into uh, a local directory uh, that is used for Go plugin to discover new plugins. And so if we run Vagrant again and we check the host detection, we should see it uh, using this new custom host uh, plugin that we just added, which is there. And so now when we run it, uh, that'll be the host that it's using and we'll see it running with that capability. And so what's very important to note at the end here is that we're using Ruby to build a Go, base, or Go plugin implementation. So the plugin system itself is completely language agnostic. The only thing that's required is that there's gRPC support and a broker implementation locally. With that, any language can be used so long as it can run on the host system. And that concludes our talk. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, and please watch for our Vagrant Go implementation to be included in the Vagrant 230 release. Cheers.